Hi, it's Anthony. Today we're going to be taking another divergence to talk about a statistics topic. So we're going to talk about covariance, but first we're going to talk about variance. We have a sim set of samples and we subtract the mean. We find the difference from the mean and then we square it. We sum it and then divide by the number of samples that we have. Covariance is when we have two two samples or two vectors and instead we want to calculate this formula where we take for our first uh, series we subtract the mean to get to our first term here and then for the second series we also subtract it from its mean and we multiply them together and then sum them and divide by the number of values in the series. This is assuming that we're looking at a, a population where we're just defined by n if we're just looking at a sample of a population we should divide by n minus one. Now all that's probably pretty easy to uh, to understand however sometimes it's a little tricky when you go to actually implement it or if you're looking at like the numpy code trying to figure out you know, like what it actually means when you put together some data. So in order to like better understand what numpy is doing behind the scenes I actually coded up my own version of covariance and we're going to run through it. So let's get coding. Okay, so I finished coding this up. So what we did here is first, I said we have two data series. Next, I made an empty square vector, or not empty, it has zeros. And I stacked them together. So if we take a quick look at what it is, this XM value is just an array where I have two rows and five columns. Then I want to loop over all possible combinations. So I could have be comparing X with Y, comparing x with x, I could be comparing y with x, and also be comparing y with y. That's why I'm doing this 4i over nn, 4j over nn, and I'm saying get the appropriate series that we're interested in, get the mean, and then I'm going to loop over the individual values in that series. I'm going to sum them together, or sum together the, the local covariance, so that's going to be just getting this value at the kth index and similarly getting this one at its kth index and then subtracting the respective means adding it to this location at ij and finally once i've done that for all k uh, for all the k values in n then i'm going to divide by n so when i do that you can see i get this matrix so again this 3 2 is x compared with x and I can check that by doing in, by using uh, numpy's variance function. So you can see in the documentation of compute the variance along the specified axis, uh, which we're going to say is none. And it's giving me a value of 3.2. Similarly, if I were to evaluate this for y, I'd get 1.6. So this adding these together is just giving me the, the variance of x and y for these two diagonal terms. Also, I can check to see if my matrix is correct, my covariance matrix is correct, by calling the numpy covariance function. And you can see it lines up with what I computed, uh, which is good, as you did it right. Um, this is kind of a, a naive approach up here. We could, for a large matrix, definitely we wouldn't want this to, to calculate it like this. Uh, we can do some I get numpy in the background is going to do some other things to make it go a little bit faster. However, it's still pretty helpful to code it up in a simple implementation once just to get a better understanding of what's going on. So that's how we can calculate the covariance matrix. I hope that was helpful.